Alright, so now we will go into much more detail. Okay, uh, we talk about the network security, then we cover application security, and then the data transmission and device security. Alright, so DDoS attack against DIN DNS services in the states, in the United States. Um, so this actually happened uh, somewhere in the October 2016. Um, so I think uh, a lot of us are pretty familiar with this uh, uh, organization, Dai DNS. Uh, they are the one that provide us with the uh, uh, used to be a free dynamic DNS update services, where the router will 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 automatically detect what is the uh, latest uh, public IP address, and then the uh, router will update to the fixed uh, host name, which is uh, uh, registered by us. All right. So and so DNS is is a very important services. Everyone knows that DNS is very important because DNS will help us to resolve any names to IP address. So if the DNS service was uh, attacked uh, and, and this is actually uh, it was hit by a DDoS attack which somewhere around this time uh, 11 to 5 p.m. Uh, UTC time and this attack paralyzed uh, nearly half of the network <laughs> in the United States. Okay, uh, So because this uh, DIE DNS they also provide they also offer DNS services to the public, a part of uh, uh, updating uh, the dynamic DNS. Okay, uh, so how 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 is it uh, possible? Okay, uh, this this kind of attack is actually through the IoT devices uh, that launches the attack. Okay, so IoT devices, as we know that, uh, for example, the uh, IP camera today uh, is one of the IP device IoT devices uh, sensors. Uh, the uh, temperature sensors, um, we have uh, um, automated kind of uh, uh, motion sensors and things like that. All right. So IPC uh, are normally sent uh, the video stream to the DVR, yeah, the uh, digital video recorder. And uh, after that, the recorder uh, are then connected to router and then to the internet. So maybe if this is compromised, if the IP camera is compromised, so therefore, uh, the uh, that there could be a potential of uh, uh, launching the attack. So that means the I I IPC, the the camera itself, is the one that launched the attack. So imagine, well, uh, this is a a large scale. So that means we are not talking about one <laughs> IP camera. We are talking about millions and millions of uh, devices, such as the uh, the IP camera. So this attack will, will, will launch from the boot net formed by IoT devices, which were infected by this uh, Mirai malware. Okay, the Mirai malware. All right. So let's look at this uh, the uh, process, how this uh, Mirai uh, attack. Okay. So first of all, uh, the, the the whole process starts from. Uh, the uh, scanning, you know. First of all, the attacker will start to look for zombies. Okay, now zombie is basically means is something like the uh, uh, the uh, the movie um, Walking Death. Okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, I couldn't remember the the name. Okay, yeah, Walking Death, right? So, uh, if uh, millions of zombies are infected, uh, they 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 are actually helping the attacker to launch an attack. To a certain website, uh, to a one particular website, or or, or something like that. Okay, uh, so first of all, the uh, the attacker will start look for open telnet service ports. Okay, so again, most of the IoT devices they are very weak in terms of security control, and they sometimes they still use telnet uh, to manage the equipment. Uh, so the typical ports are port 23 or port 2323. In, in a network, so by easily scanning the device, joining the the, the, the Wi-Fi network, and then from there, uh, they build the boot net. All right, so they will crack the IoT device's password through a brute force, and implant the uh, Mirai malware into the device for remote control later. Okay, um, so a lot of uh, IoT devices they are very weak in. Uh, 
controlling the password okay or maybe in fact uh, the implementer whoever they install the device <laughs> they don't even bother to change the password so by just looking at the the brand the the model we can easily Google for the uh, default username and password all right so that is that could be uh, that that sh that is one of the reason why the uh, the uh, IOT devices were were so easily being uh, targeted right? and after that they built a, a boot net it's like building an army team right to, 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 to get ready to launch the attack and after that uh, the uh, attacker will load the uh, DNS DDoS attack module into this uh, Mirai so Mirai now is like the Asian alright so after that they launch the uh, attack through the boot net alright and making the customer website inaccessible okay or they can make any website uh, to be inaccessible as well okay so this is actually one of the, uh, the process of the uh, uh, Mirai uh, attack so what's the means were used in this attack okay so which, which means uh, a weak uh, kind of IOT device a weak password it could be uh, also a potential uh, threats to the uh, organization um, scanning all right so scanning is actually a method uh, it's also a potential uh, attack uh, ac and action it does not directly interrupt the network devices but however scanning helps to gather relevant in network information before they launch an attack right so for scanning so this is usually what attacker will do when they join to a network when they connect to a, a free Wi-Fi cafe right they will then try to perform a scanning um, so scanning we have can be divided into two types one is called address scanning and the other one is called the port scanning so address scanning basically means when attacker joins to a whatever public internet public Wi-Fi they, they can actually start to scan by sending ICMP packet to every single IP address destination uh, let's say for example any IP which is from dot one all the way dot two dot three dot four dot five up to dot two five four okay and uh, through scanning they can actually f figure out which IP address are actually online okay and after that uh, they can also scan uh, some of the the software allows them to also scan the uh, using a TCP or UDP port to try to initiate uh, the connection to a certain address okay um, after that the next will be port scanning port scanning is actually by scanning all the known port identified ports that open to uh, uh, for services for example like port 80 is for web use uh, 443 is for HTTPS port 21 for FTP port 23 for telnet and etc etc so port scanning can actually try to list down uh, what kind of port is actually opening by the uh, by the victim or maybe by the server all right so and after that the attacker will, uh, will can determine whether the host uses this port for providing a certain services especially the one that we mentioned earlier telnet <laughs> okay right so once uh, okay so after that uh, this is a, a, a kind of a attack we call the uh, spoofing attack okay so spoofing uh, this is to obtain the control permission attacker can obtain the control permission by brute force cracking of password okay so let's say we we use the uh, previous example the telnet um, so some of the the appliance like IoT devices they are very weak in terms of uh, protecting themselves uh, brute force basi basically means the attacker can try to to start uh, the password like for example 0000, 000 after that followed by the next password 001, 002, 003 and etc et and, and, and so forth and so forth or maybe attacker can use like dictionary uh, attack you know they will download some of the very common password uh, from the internet list all right uh, most common password like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 
uh, or zero, you know, or maybe A B C A B C D one two three four, you know. So you can use the the kind of dictionary password, and then launch a brute force uh, cracking password. So this this kind of software they actually will s will try one by one. All right. So and after that, once the um, uh, then also attacker can launch spoofing attack such as IP spoofing to obtain access and also the control permission okay uh, so IP spoofing basically means if uh, uh, so IP spoofing yeah this is the uh, <laughs> explanation an attacker may send a packet with forged source IP addresses to target host to obtain superior access and control permission okay yeah so because sometimes uh, right, for example this is the uh, the target the destination 0 0.6 and let's say 0 0.6 allows 0 0.1 IP address to have full control or full access to 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 the system to to be managed okay just like I mentioned before like for example the SQL databases if let's say they are only limited to a certain IP address that can be connected uh, to manage, right? So what attacker can do is that attacker can first parallelize the 0 0.1 so that 0 0.1 are not sending out any packet because it's already parallelized and after that 0 0.1, uh, sorry, the, uh, the sniffer, okay, or the attacker can also be, uh, uh, be uh, on behalf of uh, zero uh, uh, machine A and send the request to B, right? And then uh, to try to intercept the the traffic in between. Okay, so this could be one kind of uh, attack, spoofing attack. Right. So the launching an, a DDoS attack. Okay. So we just uh, mentioned uh, just before. Um, DDoS stands for distributed denial of services. Okay. So DDoS attack. Uh, the main objective of the DDoS attack is primarily to exhaust the network bandwidth of the target target machine and also to exhaust the uh, server resources from the target machine okay um, so example this is the uh, the target so when we launch when the attacker launch uh, distributed denial services now we are talking about maybe possibly millions of traffic that's sending uh, the same uh, for example request traffic or maybe uh, the uh, yeah request yeah you send a re request traffic just to the target okay millions of transactions if 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 normal computers they might only send one or two requests um, to a server which is which is normal but what about if millions of machine and each machine they send continuously with like 10 requests per second example you know so the uh, the server you know when uh, when you receive overwhelming requests and uh, this will actually cause the uh, server resources to be exhausted and also the bandwidth the bandwidth right so let's say the server only has like 10 megabit or maybe 1 megabit of the bandwidth to connect the server so this will easily be uh, being used up right so therefore after that uh, some of the legitimate PC wanted to connect to the uh, server and uh, they couldn't access because of the uh, uh, the DDoS attack okay and uh, we also spoke about some of the um, component here for DDoS attack usually they have uh, the zombies yeah, zombies are those uh, machine that's affected by the uh, uh, the c the control agent right and uh, attacker will usually connect to a jump server okay or maybe call it the controller and the controller will actually send instruction to the to all this zombie and ask the instruct the zombie to attack uh, which uh, certain uh, target as and when they like okay and then the botnet is the whole thing here is called the botnet yeah uh, defense measure for cyber attack okay so now we talk about defense so <coughs> um, so our recommendation is actually to protect through professional equipment okay such as uh, firewall and also the uh, anti DDoS attack um, so let's look at firewall firewall deploying a firewall 
at the internet intranet egress sorry intranet egresses of a medium and large size enterprise and also the data center can efficiently defend against common DDoS attack and also traditional single packet attack right so earlier we mentioned DDoS which is distributed and sometimes uh, some attack can also come from a, a form of a single uh, packet attack like for example cracking a password right somebody try to attempt to crack the password one by one um, and um, if let's say the uh, the traffic is overwhelming the, the the ddos traffic is overwhelming so we actually do have a, a specialized product is called the anti ddos attack so anti ddos solution provides a professional anti ddos services for carriers telco telecommunication companies enterprises data center large data centers and also for portal websites online games uh, services companies online video streaming companies and also dns services all right because we know that all these are a uh, huge potential of the uh, they are the the potential of the ddos uh, attacks or victims okay